video and as a wrap up of the year, I figured we can kind of talk about lessons that I learned while doing Vlogmas. And I know that one of my videos I was saying that my Vlogmas was going to carry on from the first day after Thanksgiving all the way up until New Year's, which I failed miserably at. But, um, you know, I did still learn a lot of things about myself and about how I want to go forward as a content creator for the future and for the coming year. And if you do not mind, I am also going to be eating my lunch. So, I mean, I'm getting my cup noodle ready. I'm sure you can hear the kettle. And also a Cobb salad. By the way, Safeway has kimchi pickles. So we're gonna go ahead and try that. But um, that kind of leads me into my first lesson that I learned is what kind of content do I actually want to put out for my vlogs or for my, um, for this in general, my channel in general. Because in the past, this is actually my fourth time trying to make YouTube and content creation a thing. Um, I realized the difference between now and the past three times I've tried doing this, I never really had a direction, I just started filming. I did a lot of cringy stuff. Not cringy as in the point that I will get cancelled, but just really cringy that I'm glad that I don't have to deal with it or watch it. For Vlogmas, I did a lot of cooking, um, and that was not my intention as far as like making cooking videos. I have learned that one, I, I still suck at cooking, but two, I thought that would be like a pretty interesting journey to like embark on as far as like am I getting better at cooking or maybe I'm getting worse and maybe I will just quit. Also in the background you're gonna hear my dogs because they got the zoomies. Sorry I had to pause because I was getting a phone call from the youth center. Yeah anyway like I was saying it wasn't my intention to be making a lot of like cooking videos but it kind of ended up making me want to make more content of like me trying to cook or you know perfect my cake pop game. Another thing that I've realized is I do like makeup. I still want to continue doing like unboxings and maybe some beauty reviews but not a whole lot because I mean I feel like the um, beauty community is oversaturated. I felt like me sharing stories and my experiences and my advice um, might be beneficial later on. I'm still in the military. I have about five years left um, of my career, maybe five plus give or take, because I'm not really sure what I want to do with my life after the military, much less if I do want to retire at 20 years. And that could also be mixed in with like unboxing videos because I feel like sometimes unboxing videos may be a little bit boring because all they're doing is talking about the products that they get and it's like basically the same thing. Um, I also love reading, uh, but sometimes I feel like I don't have enough time or put aside enough time for me to actually read. I did make a video that I'll be that'll be coming out later on of all of the videos or not videos of all of the books that my friends recommended. They ended up being like 24 book recommendations. There's also a bunch of other books that are coming out that I need to read that I want to read as well. Cooking, baking, um, beauty reviews, unboxings, um, story times, and book reviews. Also, talking about the military is basically my five standard kind of things and contents that you'll be seeing on my channel. Another thing that I learned from Vlogmas is like, you know, in the past, like a lot of problems that other content creators had was that they're like they got so bent out of shape when they couldn't keep up with the demands of Vlogmas. Vlogmas was supposed to be like a fun time and kind of being creative. It just ended up being like pretty detrimental and like messing up a lot of other content creators health, mental health. But that made me realize that being a content creator, making videos, yes you want to keep to a schedule so you, you're producing enough content so when you raise an audience or grow an audience they know when to expect your content. This is more or less of a creative endeavor for me. I'm not getting paid for that although it would be pretty awesome to be um, to be monetized, so make sure you subscribe! Anyway, um, but I don't, even if I get monetized, like I don't want to lose what makes making videos and content special to me, which is this is really my creative endeavor. I don't want to make this thing serious, and it's really not that serious. This is not my job to make content. Overall, I learned with Vlogmas, even though I couldn't keep up with the demands, the demands of um, posting up like new content, 
actually not that serious and at the end no one really cares you know i got so wrapped up into like how to grow an audience how to be successful how to write the make the perfect thumbnail how to make the perfect um video and it just got so overwhelming because it's just like do this do that in order to grow an audience like i said i don't get paid for this um, I do this just because this is generally fun for me to be creative. My methods and tactics as far as like be making creative content, it might not really get me anywhere. I might not have a big audience or whatever, but at the end of the day, am I doing it to have fun? Am I still having fun? Yes, okay. So with that being said, if the way that I'm doing it is not growing my audience, getting me monetized or X, Y, and Z, then it is what it is. I still just wanna make content and have fun. And I hope that like the people that stick around like me for my past personality, my personality and the way that I can't pronounce things. In the past, when I was making videos, um, the main focal point or the main, I don't know how to say this, but basically, um, the first time that I've ever tried making a like a YouTube channel um, was when it was just my oldest Julian and I in Germany back in 2011. And a good majority of my content was surrounded by him because he was a new baby and all that stuff like that. And I thought that that's what I wanted to do. Like if I'm going to make a YouTube video or YouTube um, channel, I want to incorporate my child's life as well as my future children's life. But as I've gotten older, that was like 12 years ago, almost 13 years, right? If I do my math right? Yeah, 13 years ago. Um, that I realized I don't really want my kids to be in that type of spotlight, you know? Like if I don't want to create content that focuses solely on my children, such as their soccer practices or like, oh, their birthday adventures. I feel for those kind of things, those are private moments that I should enjoy myself as a mama. Um, but if they're like in the video, um, they just happen to be in the back or whatever, then I mean, that's fine because I'm not really exploiting my kids. They're just living their life and they just happen to be in my videos. Um, but I will, if I have my oldest, my 12 year old and stuff do things with me, then I will ask him if he wants to. But other than that, like I don't want to exploit my kids on my um, channel. Another thing that kind of kept me in the past as far as like making content was having the fear of like, oh my God, what are other people gonna think about um, about me? Like if they see my YouTube videos, are they gonna like be like cringed out? Are they gonna be embarrassed for me? Whatever. And I've realized that Again, no one really cares. The chances that someone's gonna actually watch my video that knows me from the beginning to the end just to hate on me is very low. Vlogmas has given me the courage to keep going and just get over the fact that other people are gonna talk crap about me. People are gonna make fun of me and stuff like that. It is what it is. I, at the end of the day, I'm still having fun doing this and yeah. That's all I have to say. I've also figured out a schedule and rhythm to keep going. Around last year this time, or maybe like early at the beginning of this year, um, I made a video as far as like how my day goes every morning. Um, obviously it's not the same. I don't do yoga in the morning. Um, actually, it's been a while since I've done yoga. I still work out, um, but I digress. I kind of fell off the plat, or I, I fell off my, um, my rhythm as far as like waking up at four to like have time to myself and all that stuff. Well, because of Vlogmas, I was able to kind of keep that um, keep that schedule going. So I do wake up at four still. Um, so I have some time to myself between four and 5.30. Um, it's gonna be a little bit harder though because I want to start up classes again. My hope is that I'm gonna be able to make as much content as I can to keep up posting it. So if there's time where I need to take a break, um, I don't have to worry about it because I have videos. And then last, it's kind of like stupid, kind of niche niche kind of thing as far as Vlogmas and making YouTube stuff. But I figured out my editing techniques, my style, like what would potentially make me different than other people um, is my editing style. Because I think that was another thing for me is I had a problem with like how I wanted to do my editing. And I would kind of try to copy and feel like what other YouTubers and influencers are doing. and. It just never worked out for me. Speaking of which, another thing that was kind of a setback for me was like, oh, I need to like get a nice camera. I need to do this and that. And then super undermining the fact that my 
phone has a camera. I've realized that I feel like I have prefer preference preferences on um, recording on my phone just because it's like a lot easier for me. I've realized that I don't really need a camera and maybe down the road um, if I get like super successful on that, maybe I will change it. But for now, um, having to not deal with getting a memory card and uploading all that footage to my computer, whereas I can just have it directly uploaded to my drive, to um, my computer, it's not really a big deal. But yeah, that is what I learned um, from Vlogmas. And hopefully, if you are still here and you're still watching me, thank you so much. By the way, I also noticed that, um, yeah, we should try this. But, like the pickles are like huge. Like I'm used to like really tiny pickles and stuff like that, so. It just tastes like pickles. It's like, <laughs> like as if like Patrick and I made a batch of kimchi and we didn't want to throw away the, um, the juices. So we decided to just soak pickles in it. That's basically what it is. I'm going to try to get something at the bottom. It's like filled to the brim. So I'm afraid that like, if I dig so like really hard, it's going to have like some of the liquids come out. So this is at the bottom, I think. I don't know, I'm gonna have to ask Patrick how he feels about these. Anyway, I'm gonna eat my salad, okay? And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! Apparently, he has tried them before. I need you to try them again, I guess. They weren't that great. <laughs> what do you remember? They were pickles that have kimchi splashed on them. That's literally what I thought too.